Weird stuff happens in gaming all the time. And Game Ranks put together some of the weirdest stuff every month because who doesn't like to gawk? Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the weirdest gaming stories in May 2021. Starting with number 10, a 93 year old man who loved to drive cars and has been unable to for a while, least of all because COVID puts older people at risk and he hasn't really been able to be out for a while. No, actually he voluntarily gave up his driver's license seven years ago because of his age. He's gotten into Forza 7 though. Now the particularly cool thing about this game for him is that it has a extensive list of classic cars, including a car that he actually owned, a first generation Mazda RX-7. Using the customization options in the game, he was actually able to make a car that looked exactly like his old car, a metallic silver Mazda RX-7. He also plays the game in fully manual with a shifter, gas pedal, brake pedal, and clutch pedal, and is pretty good, although sometimes he runs into the wall a lot. Maybe voluntarily gave up that license for a few real reasons. That said, actually he is a pretty good driver, especially for 93. At number 9, retailers are having to stop selling Pokemon cards in store because of a sudden surge of interest causing, well, what can only be described as a number of incidents. There's been mass panic buying as well as scenes of both verbal and physical violence. So it's not just Pokemon cards, it's all trading cards in general. It's kind of been driven by Pokemon cards though. There's been a big leap in interest in trading cards lately. I think, again, probably because everybody's been cooped up and needs hobbies, but it did get a little out of hand here. We're talking about a situation in which guns have been taken out in parking lots. Specifically, the incident happened at a Target parking lot, but it hasn't just been Target that's dealt with these mass panic buys and violent incidents. Aside from Target, Walmart and numerous other retailers have moved their trading card business to online exclusive just because it's turning into Black Friday in their stores over trading cards. Eight Epic Games has apparently spent at least a billion dollars on exclusives. Now, we can talk how good or bad you think this is in the comments. We're just talking about what's happened. So, Epic has implemented something that they have decided to call the Aggressive Pursuit Model. An appropriate name, might I add, as they have been going very hard to get exclusives onto the Epic Game Store. They are willing to spend for it, too. A document that was released called the Review of Performance and Strategy, which, by the way, is a document reviewing the year 2019. Forget the year 2020, I am sure that there is a large number of stuff there. But by October 2019, they had already spent over a billion dollars in securing exclusives for the Epic Store. Now, when you have that kind of money to throw around and you want to win, that's what you do. The vast majority of them, however, interestingly enough, were timed exclusives where the game would come to Steam after 12 months. This is, I mean kinda not great for gamers, but also not terrible, because I mean at least it eventually lands on Steam. Still, that year is an inconvenience. I don't want to pick too many sides on this one, because there are a lot of fans of both Steam and Epic at this point, but wow, that is a lot of money. At number 7, World of Warcraft Classic is instituting a fee to play the same character on both Burning Crusade and WoW Classic servers. That fee is $35, keeping in mind that World of Warcraft Classic is basically a free thing that you get with a WoW subscription in order to make it so that the game plays like it did back in 2006. And honestly, it's a pretty cool thing that Blizzard did for everybody. However, Burning Crusade Classic, which is the classic version of the original expansion, basically functioning in the same way as World of Warcraft Classic in general, will be added to it. However, if you want to play on the Burning Crusade Classic servers, you have to pay $35 to clone your character to it. So to have the same character on two classic servers, it's just an extra 35 bucks. And the thing is, if you're not playing classic, this isn't stuff that's going to really affect you. A lot of players called this a money grab to cash in on nostalgia, and it's kind of hard to argue with those players. At number six, BioWare actually used the Mass Effect modding community as a benchmark to figure out exactly where it wanted to go with its improvements. 
So Mass Effect Legendary Edition had to be modernized to at least some extent, and the way they figured out exactly what level they were going to was by checking out some mods and saying, well, it's gotta look better than this. The developers cited some specific advantages they have over the modding community, like having access to the original full resolution textures for any upscaling work they're going to do, as opposed to the fact that modders had to use compressed textures for any AI upscaling that they did. On top of that, they have also spoken with several modders to find out things that modders would be interested in for the game because they want people to be doing the same kind of stuff modding the new games as the old because the modding community helped keep the games alive over all that time. It's neat that not only that is the benchmark that they use, but they actually communicated with the people who voluntarily injected their time and effort into this beloved series. And number five, we can't talk about weird gaming stories this month without talking about Resident Evil mods. So we have seen some of the most absurd, silly, and maybe a little bit too much for us to show type mods for Resident Evil 8 Village. And I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about how a horror game can be so easily ruined by just switching out a couple of things. Like for instance, instead of having zombies, why not have Teletubbies? Instead of having a gun to defend yourself against those Teletubbies, oh, you got a banana now. Oh my God, we're in the cellar with a bunch of Barney the Dinosaurs. They're moving around in a way that's kind of scary, I guess, but looks a little bit like Barney's had some to drink. Chris, what the hell, man? What's up with your head? Why you look like that, man? And we can't really mention this whole thing without all of the very sexual costumes that they put on to Lady Dimitrisk. Um, we're not gonna show those. That's way too much. Bunch of thirsty gamers out there. Calm down, guys. The original costume is already a lot. Am I wrong? At number four, China has decided that, man oh man, kids are playing too many video games. So a new regulation going in with video games in China is that game developers are going to have to check the ID of all of their players. And that ID is being checked for age because people who are under the age of 18 will no longer be able to play games between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. During the week, they will only be able to play 90 minutes a day and over the weekend, 180 minutes a day. Now, previously, these regulations were only in place for mobile games because as you know mobile games can be pretty insane honestly if you're playing mobile games for over an hour and a half a day there is a good chance that you're playing a very long period of time daily with very addictive gameplay mechanics that are designed to bleed you dry monetarily i get it i maybe wouldn't do the same thing as china here but i get the idea all games kind of weird they aren't all doing that same thing to you china I don't know, maybe with these regulations in place, publishers will have to adjust what kinds of games they're putting out and maybe we'll see less stuff geared towards microtransactions. I don't know, I'm just trying to find a silver lining. It's possible that because you can't do it as well there, they'll start trying to make games that you can play for an hour, half a day, and that's it, compress the experience. Maybe they'll make linear games again, jam pack that experience into small amounts of time that get your money's worth. I don't know, probably wishful thinking on my part. At number three, the Berserk creator, Kentaro Miyura, unfortunately died. Basically what happened is one of the blood vessels in his heart tore, which is really like not a good way to go. Obviously, rest in peace. Fans gathered in Final Fantasy XIV online and paid tons of memorials to him. Berserk was a manga series set in a dark fantasy, Europe-inspired setting. It was made into an anime, there were a couple of films. I mean, it is actually a really good series if you're interested in looking something up. It's completely understandable why there were huge impromptu gatherings in online games, particularly Final Fantasy XIV, a dark fantasy game. Again, RIP. At number two, a Pokemon Go player held a gym for 1,332 days. That is the three and a half year anniversary for holding a gym. And unfortunately, somebody just immediately cheated the gym away from him. What happened was somebody spoofed location when he posted on the internet that he had held the location for that many days. Now, this was actually his goal length that he wanted to make it to, so he's not upset or anything. In fact, good for him. 
but it also kind of sucks that some random just kind of stole it from him by doing something crappy just because they saw somebody celebrating an accomplishment on the internet. I mean, that's how things work. So it's not exactly something that I wouldn't expect upon hearing about some kind of celebratory event that somebody could spoof their way into ruining, but that doesn't make it right. And finally, at number one, Destiny 2's new transmog system is an armor synthesis thing that players assumed was going to be bad, and it turned out to be worse than players assumed. It had a reveal a few weeks before they brought it out. People saw this, were not excited for it, and you have to spend about 25 hours to transform everything to its completion. Basically, they spent time explaining what I can only call a totally arbitrary process with lots of steps for collecting various synth materials called synth strands, synth cord, and synth weave. It's uh, dumb. Like, I can't find any way that anybody would consider this to be just wasting your time. And the thing that sucks is like people have been asking for ways to do more actual customization on their look in Destiny for as long as I can remember. And this is like a step towards that, but it's like instead of just a straightforward step, like it's a really complicated dance that I don't know why you would even want to learn in the first place when the thing that you want to do is get from one end of the room to the other. You don't really care about dancing. A quick bonus. Hey, remember we're talking about Resident Evil mods? This ridiculous one where you have a fly swatter and you can slap Lady Dimitrisk. I mean, it's, it's uh, totally ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. The slap sound effect, come on. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.